Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Array Method 7 for Part 3 of Module 1. Uh, join three arrays. Write a function called join three arrays. Given three arrays, join three arrays. Returns an array with the elements of array 1 in order, followed by the elements of array 2 in order, followed by the elements of array 3 in order. You should be familiar with the concat method for this problem. Um, quite right, because the concat method is going to make this uh, really simple. Uh, of course, we could absolutely iterate over each array individually, add that to a new array, and then return it. But essentially, that's what the concat method is going to do. So let's say variable concatted is equal to... This is actually not a great habit. We do this in a bunch of the examples I'm running through for, for y'all. Uh, but in general, uh, the problems aren't going to be this esoteric, meaning they're not going to have such a little to do with anything like in reality. Um, theoretically, there would be a reason why you were concatting them, so that might inform what you name the variable. In cases like this where we're basically just demonstrating the purpose of a method, something like concatted can help you understand that this was what was concatted. But anyway, array one dot concat. And it turns out that concat will let us just pass in a bunch of arrays if we want to. Um, you do want to remember that it's not going to change array one, array two, or array three. The result of this method is what the is what we want. So we'll return concatted after the fact. And we're correct. So there it is, concatted is equal to array one dot concat, array two and array three, and then return that concatted. Add to the front of new. So this one's a pretty straightforward. The only difference between uh, this and just, huh, I think it's, I think this one ought to say that it, you should be familiar with the unshift method. Um, let's go ahead and jump over to MDN real quick, just to ensure that we're still looking good. Unshift, and we'll make sure that it's unshift for an array. Unshift adds one or more elements to the beginning of an array and returns the new length of the array. Uh, sometimes you want to make sure that you're not, uh, that you don't assume that it returns something it doesn't. But in this case, unshift is going to be our best bet. Uh, you'll also want to remember that we can create a copy of the input array. So to say copy of array, and that's just going to be equal to array.slice. We could do array.slice from zero, but array.slice without any uh, parameters is going to make a copy of the input array, which for some reason, actually, it's mostly to ensure that you know how to do this, and that's why the question is asking you to do that. So uh, at this point, we're going to take the copy of the array, call unshift on it, and we're going to unshift with the element that we want added to the front, after which we can return copy of array, which I'm probably going to mess up the spelling of, so I'm copy and pasting it, make a copy, unshift the copy, unshift the, the input element into the copy of the array, and then return the copy of the array. And we're in good shape. Add to the back of new, very similar, except the method we're going to use rather than unshift is going to be push. So first we make a copy by using slice with no parameters, sorry, no arguments. Uh, push the element, the input element, onto the copy, and then return the copy. By the way, when we look up slice, it'll say that this makes a shallow copy. Uh, that's a fun thing to look up, what a shallow copy is versus a deep copy. So I'll leave that for you guys, for, for y'all. Uh, get all elements but nth. A couple of ways to do this. One, uh, okay, so given an array and an index, get all elements but nth returns an array with all the elements but the nth. So one way we could do this is we'll make a for loop. So we iterate over the array. Say i is less than the array's length i++, plus plus. and there's the for loop. We'll say variable result is going to be equal to a new array, and essentially uh, we're going to say if, they don't want the nth one, so we'll say if i is equal to n, although to be sure, let's make sure that this is, so yeah, one, yeah, so it's counting from zero, n is counting from zero as well, so if i is equal to n, uh, we're going to use a keyword here called continue. Continue just means stop doing anything in this for loop iteration, go to the next one. Uh, there's also something called break, which means stop the for loop completely. But in this case, if i is equal to n, we just we don't want to do anything. In all other cases, we're just going to add the elements from the input array to the result array. So we'll say array uh, result.push of array at i. And then at the end, we'll return the result. So this is sort of like the homespun way to do this. We make an array, we iterate, we use a conditional plus a keyword. Um, there's a way to get around this without even using continue by putting this part in the else, but I just didn't feel like doing that. 
Uh, and so then we push all the values that are not equal to the nth value into the result and then return the result. So that's correct. The other way to do this, and we'll leave this, um, yeah, we'll leave this commented out. So the other way to do this is to use something called splice. So let's look up splice. Splice allows us to remove and add, and it actually does a ton of stuff, but it changes the contents of the array uh, by removing or replacing existing elements and adding possibly new elements. Um, so here's another one of those. This syntax may look kind of awkward, but once you start to read a lot of these, it'll seem a little bit easier. We're going to remove ourselves from this page just for a moment. I'm going to just tell you the answer. When we call splice on the array, the first parameter or the first argument is where we want to start cutting. So we want to start cutting at n because that's where we're going to be deleting things. The second parameter is how many elements of the array we want to remove. And in this case, it's one. So that's actually all we end up doing. And then we're going to return the array. You might notice that, hey, we didn't set this equal to anything. And the reason is, is because splice is destructive, meaning that splice is actually going to change the array rather than just producing a result like slice would. So slice is going to make a copy, possibly a copy of a small portion of the array, whereas splice is actually going to affect the array that we call it on. So now that we have called splice at n and to remove one value, we run the test and we're correct. It's like, hey, what else can splice do? A lot. Splice can do a whole bunch. Um, which is, it's a very, it's a fun method. So check out the syntax for this. Maybe go over some of the examples to see if you get an idea of what's going on. Uh, the examples are key for this one. Working through the examples is a really good way to make sure you understand splice. So that is it for array method seven. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.